by regenerating the economy and I would begin, in my opinion, by abolishing the tax. That would enthuse the, uh, the, the, the middle class and ultimately the middle class is our driving, uh, cutting edge of our economy. And then, of course, we go to agriculture. Nassima Rao made a mistake why he lost the election. Remember, every reformer, whether it is Nassima Rao or Chandrababu Naidu or uh, in Karnataka, Krishna, uh, 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 they all lost elections. Why did they lose elections? Because the Soviet, under the Soviet system, an entrenched vested interest has grown, which lives on on being uh, lobbies on being counts, on people who can manage things for you. They are very, very entrenched. And not many political party parties are also built on that. So when you deregulate, they immediately see their uh, losses, immediately takes place. But, but the beneficiaries do not see the benefits immediately. It comes slowly. They say filter down, whatever it is, it take time. So, if when you def, uh, design an economic reform, you should design some things which bring immediate relief. So, people say, yes, something is happening, something for us also. Otherwise, they say this whole reform is for rich people. So, therefore, I say income tax, middle class happy. The rich don't pay any income tax, they got cut the companies to do the job. <laughs> Whether it's satyam or asatyam, but they get it done. <laughs> and the poor don't have money to pay income tax. So who pays income tax is the basically the middle class and to pay the tax. So liberate them. What about the poor? Agriculture is generated, textile is generated, employment is generated. One of the things that failures have been lack of growth in employment. So you need to design your economic reform in such a way that uh, people begin to see things happening. Not only uh, being told that this is filtered down, it will happen soon, or the world, the world will praise you depending on their interests. You don't have to worry about the world at all. But what you have to do is to get your people enthused to uh, get for you. So I would say don't despair. In 1975, 77, when I was fighting the emergency, almost everybody told me this is the way of the future. The dynasty has finally come. Uh, it will be Indira Gandhi, then Sanjay Gandhi, then Sanjay Gandhi's dog, but not you. And uh, why are you fighting the whole third world? Where is democracy? Democracy doesn't work. And uh, there was no way I could tell the people, no, no, democracy will come back. I only have to say, therefore, well, we'll keep fighting to help with the consequences. And one day, suddenly, Mrs. Gandhi herself declared the election, and she lost the election also. So this is something I could not have predicted. So therefore, uh, do the right thing, and uh, results will come. And I think the Indian, Indian uh, past history shows whenever there's a crisis, we have responded very well. I'm sure that this crisis will also produce some, a golden period of economic growth for India. After maybe a year, it can be done sooner, depending on the policies that we follow. But there is enough resilience, and we will definitely be an economic power. We were an economic power only 400, 500 years ago. And uh, in the richest moment of our history, we got conquered. So it's not poverty which is dangerous for us. Richness is also uh, dangerous for us. It's the mindset which is required. It's not your numbers. Just because you have large, you have billion people. Uh, billion people, there will be a thousand goats and one tiger will come and all the goats will run away. All the thousand will run away. Or not, it is your inherent strength because in a circus you will have five lions and one thin ringmaster and he will crack the whip and all the five lions will obey him. Even though the ringmaster is standing right before them, each one, one of them is enough not to talk to their teeth, they can do their paw, knock him down completely. But they obey him because that's the mind. That's the problem today with India. We have numbers, we have the mind of a circus lion, and we have to therefore come out of that 
and think of fresh and I think therefore we were once upon a developed country, we can become developed again, we must learn from our history, but democracy is not a spectator sport, it is not like watching 2020, you have to participate in it, how in what form you will participate in it, you have to decide, I am not saying everybody of you has to contest an election. Those who are there to do this time, like Ms. Sanya in Bombay and some other people here and there, I am there, of course, because election is not just popularity, it's also machinery, it's also organization, it's also knowing uh, how to bring people to the uh, polling booth, etc. So it's a very gigantic operation. It's not simply somebody standing up and people saying, wow, it's a wonderful person. They don't work like that. And, uh, but still, they try, I pray that, and I would like all of us in the greater glory of India for the future to become participants in the democratic process rather than spectators. Thank you very much. Friends, that was an excellent presentation by Ram Swami. Uh, I do want to we have some questions from the floor, but before I open it up, I have two questions for you. Uh, you talked about the depletion of foreign exchange reserves is because of uh, farmers being called back, and participatory laws being called back. Uh, but you also said the participatory laws are actually money for the politicians, and therefore why would politicians want to take back the money because there is no place to invest other in India. No, no. The participatory notes is managed by uh, fidelity insurance, investments, uh, mortgage standing and so on. And the politicians only just in the rate of return. And so they will get a higher rate of return in the United States than they will get from India just now. And it will be in dollars. They won't have the problem of convertibility. So, therefore, uh, these managers immediately took out the money and uh, sent it abroad. So the politician is, uh, is not, there's no patriotism in, the, in, this, in this at all. The politicians say, oh, India is the best place for me. He wants a return and they, these good um, mutual funds, they manage it. Thank you. Uh, the second question. Is that we talked about the removal of income tax for removal of personal income tax, but harassment is significantly more, corruption is significantly more in corporate income tax, not personal income tax. Yeah. Well, I think corporate income tax, what you can do is if the corporates uh, spend for the employees, like uh, building a school, health, uh, scholarships for their children, uh, going abroad, uh, transportation. Uh, housing, so on. All these should be made tax exempt. And then uh, I, I think the money that will be left over will be so small that you will need to pay the tax anyway. I don't think that's a problem. I agree with you. Uh, income tax, I told you, the ideal solution is to send the CRP and DSF and put a law on the income tax department. But uh, we have to do it in a way that doesn't uh, destabilize the system. So that's why I'm saying first start with this. Take indirect taxes. I would say if you look at the top 25 uh, commodities, they will be uh, accounting for 90% of the indirect tax. So why have indirect tax on the sales tax and all these things for the others? Just remove, except for 25, don't have it for anybody else. That will clean up the system. So those are, those are what I would call as uh, uh, not black and white measures, but you know, great measures by which we make a sequence. But the, the shock value will come when you abolish person. Okay. Right, thank you. I just want to bring it, bring back the subject which you said we'll cover again on just India versus China. 